That's, that's what kids do, either they play football or ice hockey. Well, probably everybody around me was playing, my friends and stuff. And uh, close where I lived, there was a big uh, football pitch where I always went to and played with my friends and having fun. So it's from early, early age, the beginning was. So what age were you when you started playing? I think it was around five, five years old. It's not hard actually, because uh, the city I'm from is in the south of the city. In, in Sweden, and uh, it's not so cold. There is minus one, two, three, something like that. So we can we can do trainings, and we have a lot of indoor halls also in Sweden when you where you train on plastic grass. Mm. So during the winter, there is a lot of indoor arenas where you play. So there is no problem to train or practice. So there is a plenty of indoor halls and arenas there where you can play and everything. And I also remind me. Of all this after school, I was a little. I always went to an indoor arena and played with my friends. You know, and there was nobody complaining or something. Everybody could come and enjoy. It. Since I was a little kid, there was nothing else for me. Either it was football or there was no plan B. Let's say I always uh, did 100 percent for the football and nothing else. No, actually, no. They didn't make any pressure on me or something. They just they want wanted me to have fun and let me have fun and uh, choose what I want in life. Of course, I did the school and all that stuff, but. Uh, football was the only thing I, I uh, went 100% into. That's the result to be, become a, a professional football player. Well, you can be professional from early age, but of course you normally take the steps like you know, in Japan, you go in school, high school and stuff. And uh, and after that, you let's say you play, play in a professional club, even since you were a small boy, you can get a professional contract when you're 16, 17, you know. And, uh, it's, the future in Sweden is like that. Many players get a uh, contract with the top team when they are 16, 17. You know. Well, I don't know how to say it, but we, not like a team, but when I went to high school, uh, it was like in a football class, but it was not like we compared to uh, compare, compare, uh, how do I say, uh, play against other schools and classes. It's just that we had a focus on football and school, school at the same time, you know. But most of the people in our class went in the same club for the professional team also, you know. So we mixed the football and the school. Yeah. I was in that club from when I was 9 to 19, you know. Uh, that's where I got my education. It's the biggest club in Sweden and everything, so... It was professional from the very early beginning, you know. When we was 12, 13, it was all about winning, you know. Winning the games, winning the tournaments, and yeah, we won all the things. Yeah. Well, all, all the best players, they went to, to Malmö, you know. In, in the, that's the best team in, in Sweden, you know, so... Well... No, because all the, they, they picked like all the best players into their team for the small teams around, you know. So they picked a lot of players around Malmö in the small teams and picked them into the big team Malmö then. So it was not so hard, you know, uh, to get in. Yeah. No, not from school, it's just from, from the teams, you know. When 10 year olds teams play against other 10 year olds, then they, they can see what you can do and stuff. And, uh, I went there for, from trial training and uh, pretty much after one or two days they, they wanted me to come, you know, so it was a fast move. When we always start like with the... Uh, in Sweden we train a lot of defense, you know. The defense work how to be organized well in the defense way and stuff, so... Uh, that's, that's the main part of Sweden, you know, the defense, that, that has to be uh, the, the very solid. Well, when I was a young kid I didn't have to, but when you grow up and be professional, then you have the most of them, somewhere in the middle of the night there, so I <coughs> were trainings there after so I couldn't watch, but most of them I watched it. So what kind of tournament was it for uh, for Sweden? No, it was a, a big tournament, like you said, it became the best eight. Uh, that's a big achievement for Sweden, it's a very small country, only 9-10 million people, so uh, it was very well done for them. And uh, of course, that's the biggest thing was also now in this world of the defense, you know, they were very solid and uh, they were very well there, so the opponents had a problem to break through. It's, it's hard to say, but probably they teach something right, you know, from the from the early age, you know. And uh, like you said, we are a small country, but often we make very good prestation and results, you know. Like this World Cup, come best eight and uh, always qualifying into big tournaments also. So and also in, in the club team right now, it's pretty strong also. Malmo has been in the Champions League two times in a row and. Uh, 
So it is, I think it's a bright future for Swedish football. That might be the most important, uh, most effective part to make the Swedish soccer good, like that? Uh, probably. And, uh, I don't know, it's, sometimes it can be some specific, specific generations coming up, you know, it's a certain age. And just in that age, time they play for Sweden, you know, they're good. And when they finish, maybe become new players and they're not so good. But right now it's pretty okay. But first of all, in, in World Cup we play against very tough opponents every game, you know. And, uh, maybe individual, all the teams Sweden were playing against were better than them. So that's why they know what to do also. They have to be collective in defense way as a team, you know, and uh, make it hard for the opponent in defense way. And then, like in World Cup, they often went to counter-attack and they, they uh, also strong in set pieces and stuff. So, like, like, they didn't score a lot, but they didn't concede the goals either, you know, so uh, they were solid. We, of course, I'm, I'm proud of them, what they achieved and everything, so uh, that's even a, a even smaller task. They only have five million people, you know. And they, and that's completely different to Sweden. If you compare Croatia and Sweden, Croatia is, is better, you know, better. They have uh, top class players in the biggest teams in the world, many of them. So it's, you can't really compare Sweden and Croatia, even though Sweden is a bigger country and more people than Croatia. Now it was fun, they went pretty, pretty well, you know. They had a little bit unlucky, I guess, Belgium. They had 2 0, but they lost 3 2. It would be fun if they could uh, achieve uh, a win there. But I think they made, made it good. They also know, like Sweden, what they are capable to do and what they have to do. So uh, they, they made it together. If we have 2 0, yeah, uh, yeah we would probably play more defensive. So you know, you play against some of the biggest players in the world. You know, Belgium have top class players, so you have to think. And, well, I've had many, many impressions now. I've been there for two and a half years, so uh, well, it's. I think it's, it's a good, bright future for the Japanese football. You know, there's good players, and uh, I like that it's, it's, it's speedy football. You know, uh, I think it's going to be in future develop on better and better. The league will be better and better, and everything. So uh, it's, it's bright future for Japan. I, think. I knew some were playing in Europe, like uh, Honda and Okazaki and Nagatomo. And the organization of the teams is better in Sweden. I think uh, how they do everything together. You know. But of course, it's, it's two different kind of football, you know. And here in Japan, it's more like speedy, individual, technical players and stuff. So it, it's, it's uh, two different worlds, you know. Uh, the kind of play you play there and what you play here and stuff. So uh, it's, it's nice to, to see what, what they do here in Japan also. And I don't, it's not so much mistakes in J1 as it is in J2. It's a little bit more mistakes, passing mistakes and stuff. So the, of course, it's also a better quality players in J1 if you compare to J2. So yeah, there is a, a difference. No, well, I think that's that's a good thing to bring in players like that. You know, they're coming with their influences and that's top players that've been winning everything you can win in the, the world. You know, so bringing in them, there is more. It's now also Podolski and Torres came, so it's it's just fun for the Japanese league and for the spectators to see you know, world class players. Well, uh, what you have to do. That's a very good question, but baseball is a very famous sport here. Yeah. It's hard to compete against that, maybe. In Sweden, we don't have baseball, so we don't have to compete against baseball. But I don't know if, if Japan can make it go go long or go in the next World Cup, maybe if they can go along to, I don't know, semi final or something, then more spectators will see it and they will like to watch football, maybe. So, uh, but it's, it's hard to say what you really can do to that should be a more popular sport. Yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, I like Japan a lot, and uh, you never know in future you, what, what's happening. You know, if, you know, after football, if you have something to do with Japan or something, some business, you know, you know uh, probably or something. You never know. You know, I, I only concentrate on football, and uh, I want to do that first. And after that, let's see. Super <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>